Hey, what's going on everyone? This is Mitch. Good Wednesday evening to you all. Hope you guys are doing well out there tonight and had yourselves a wonderful day and I hope everyone's been having a great week out there so far. Thank you all for tuning in. This video is going to be a little bit different than it typically is in these uh, evening videos, especially for my regulars. We're going to speak on the weather for one specific day and that's for April 8th, the day of the total solar eclipse and try to give you guys our first guess at it. I know some people are like, Mitch, this is crazy. This is, you know, 11, 12 days out. Uh, we can barely figure out what the weather's going to do three days out. Well, a lot of people have been asking, and honestly, I'm interested just in trying to figure this out and see how we can compare things when we are on the day of, and we can go back 11 to 12 days and see how close we actually were with figuring out the forecast as far as what the weather's going to do. There's a lot of people traveling to this, traveling long distances, and you you should. This is an awesome event. I live here in Central South Carolina. I was fortunate enough to see the total eclipse and didn't have to drive anywhere um, in 2017 in August. I think it was August 21st. So this is a really cool event. So um, we're going to continue to fine tune this. This information will change, but we're going to give you guys some really good information pretty far out. So let's start off by looking at this. This is uh, the total solar eclipse path of totality, which goes right through this region right here. Of course, uh, lower percentage, the further away you get from the path of totality. And I want to tell you guys right off the dot, if you live in like that 98, 97, even 99% totality, make that couple hour drive to that 100%. That 1% to 3% makes a huge difference. And honestly, it's literally like night and day. Make make the make the travel if you can. Take that day off if you can. I know not everybody is fortunate enough to be able to do that, but it's certainly worth it. So I'm going to get this in motion. You're going to see some motion with this. And uh, this is the timing. This is an Eastern time. OK, so I know that this is moving through in Central time right here at this time frame um, and it's moving very slowly. But as you can tell, we'll kind of zoom in, check out Dallas. This is going to go over Dallas. It's going to go over Little Rock. Little Rock, not right smack dab in the middle, but I mean, it's still in the path of totality. Texarkana goes up through Carbondale in southern Illinois, portions of the Boot Hill, Missouri, goes all the way up into Indianapolis, and then all the way into Cleveland, uh, just north of Columbus, uh, Toledo Point South, Dayton, Ohio, all the way through Buffalo, Watertown, Syracuse, the Adirondacks, and then cuts right through the heart of Maine. So we kind of zoom this out, and here it comes making its way through, you know. So this is a really cool event. This is the path of totality. If you're not familiar, if you're tuning in, you're probably familiar with the path. But let's just dive right into this, right? Let's go on and pause this. So the first thing we're going to look at, and if you're a new viewer, you're not used to this stuff, this is what we call the GFS model. We're going to take a look at the GFS and the European model. These are both global models that we look at when trying to figure out what in the world is going to happen way out there in the future as far as the weather. What we do know is if you're a new viewer, um, don't really pay attention to the weather unless it's something like this. Anything past like seven days on these models really can just, it's very, it's just not accurate. It really isn't. So we're going to start this off. Look up here. It says SAT for Saturday, April the 6th. I know you're thinking, Mitch, that's not the day of the eclipse. But it, it, it's still paying attention to what happens with the weather, um, even two days before, is going to help us figure out what act eventually moves from one area to the next two days later into the day of the eclipse, which is the 8th, right? So what it looks like to me on the GFS, and this is going to change, is you have some sort of low pressure over the Rockies. You see you've got higher elevation snow, lower elevation rain. Now this system is eventually going to, at, at some form or fashion, move east, which remember that path of totality, I'm gonna try drawing this a little bit, kind of goes right through this area right in here. Okay, so we keep this going. This is Sunday, Sunday's not a big deal. And then we get into Monday. I want to tell you guys, this is Monday morning, 282 hours out. This is far out, but I just want to show you some of these long range model guidance. Shows a big rainstorm, big storm system right over the middle of the country. And of course, the path of totality starting right down here, what I think Monday afternoon, and it's heading right towards this big blob of rain. So this is right in the middle of the day, um, Monday, like lunchtime, all right? 
path is still going through there. It's probably still down here. There's no point in sp speaking so much specifically, sp specifically on this. There really isn't. I and mean, we can do it all day, but it's going to change so much. There's no point in it. So what we do is, you know, this is for Monday, April 8th, 18Z. It's about midday Monday. We know, okay, there's the GFS is showing some sort of storm system that is of impacting and affecting that path of totality. Okay. Who all is it going to affect? We're not sure. But just know that this system could disappear and a couple GFS runs. It could. What we can do is we're going to go back to 10 days out. This is, let's just go all the way back to Saturday afternoon. Remember, we got a storm right here. And then we look at the European. The European model only goes 10 days out. So it's only going to take us out to Saturday morning. It has a similar storm system around the same area. It's a little bit further northeast. There's a storm system over here. But in general, it does show a storm system. Okay, so I'm not trying to bum anybody out. This could change. But this is kind of getting backed up from some of what we call the ensemble guidance too. But I want to show you a graphic. We're going to be looking at a lot over the next couple of days. This is a very cool graphic from Pivotal Weather, and it's basically just symbolizing cloud cover. And of course, the more this kind of whitish blue color you see right here, I mean, that's showing 100% cloud cover in this region. Okay, 0% down here in the southwest. Typically, there's not as active weather. So this is coming up on the morning of April the 8th, the day of the total solar eclipse. And it even shows the path of totality right through here. So if you were to look at this and say, okay, this is exactly what's going to happen, you would think, man, there's a lot of cloud cover right along the path of totality. And you would be like, it, it, and I just want to say this 112 times, guys, not literally, but I want to say this and just reiterate it over and over again. This information will change, but this is a cool graphic we're going to be looking at a lot. This particular one, the GFS says a large percentage of the path to totality is going to be covered up by clouds, but might not be the case. It really might. Sorry to be a little everywhere. Then we get into Monday evening and same deal. But this is going to change a lot. In fact, we kind of go up here and look at the latest GFS run. Okay, because we do have a new one. Let's give it a second to load. And we're going to take it all the way out to that the time frame of the eclipse. Just going to take a minute to load, guys. But I just want to I just want to give you an example of how much this could change. And we'll keep it going. And we'll take it all the way to the morning. And there's still it's kind of the same similar areas, but if you notice. There's a little bit more clearing going on in Texas and Arkansas. This system looks like it's heading on out faster, but I'm not going to lie to you. This It even has that comma head look. This looks like some sort of storm system over the central and eastern U.S., which is right where the path of totality is going to go through. But that does not mean that's, that's what's going to happen. This could change a lot. But I want to tell you, this is where I'm going to throw a lot of people for a loop. Um, what I'm showing you here is a trough of low pressure, and a ridge of high pressure. The warmer colors, the yellows, the oranges, this pretty much symbolizes high pressure, which is more calmer, stable conditions. Okay, and this is for Sunday morning. Let's go on and just move it right to the day, the morning of the eclipse. Okay, this tells me that there's the potential for more calmer conditions maybe over the Northeast, which a lot of people are already thinking, well, the Northeast this time of the year in early April is always kind of socked in clouds. And that is very correct. Same thing with the Great Lakes region. Um, might be a scenario where you had the better weather, but we're still very far out. I'm going to say that a million times, guys. So you notice you got the oranges and the yellows. You're thinking, Mitchell, what does that mean? Well, that means you got high pressure over there. That means that you could have more calm or stable conditions, which more stable conditions would mean probably uh, less clouds because you, you don't have unsettled weather, which obviously rain, snow, storms, obviously is going to be cloudy conditions. But if you look out here in the west and the central U.S., this to me symbolizes lower pressure. And this is a big what we call a trough of low pressure over the western and central U.S. This is going to tell me that there's probably going to be unsettled weather over the western U.S., but you're thinking, well, the eclipse isn't really going over the western U.S. You'll get some percentage um in that area but the path of totality of course is what everybody is wondering but if you notice you're in between the lower pressure and the higher pressure but typically in between those you have some sort of actual low pressure which is bringing some sort of some sort of storminess so that is there 
And then that leaves us with this. Okay, this is Sunday morning. Same kind of thing, but this is more so symbolizing an actual low pressure, a storm system. Higher pressure over the eastern U.S., lower pressure right in the middle of the country, right now to the south central U.S., and then this looks like it's moving in general further east. But of course, we only need several hours for clearing. We don't need a, even a full day or two days. So, you know, if, if we had to make a guess now, we would say, hey, there's probably going to be some unsettled weather somewhere over the central U.S., um, which we know that the south central U.S., if we go back to this, is going to be the area that gets the totality. Eventually this moves into the Mississippi Valley, southern sections of the Midwest and the Ohio Valley, and then the interior Northeast. So, you know, so some of the model guidance is wanting to try to show some unsettled weather in the South Central US, but guys, this can change. So I know some people probably clicked on this and like, just Mitch, tell me if there's gonna be clouds at, at two something o'clock in the afternoon in my area. We just can't do that, we really can't. But we, be, we'll, we will be able to do that a lot more as we get a little bit closer. But this tells us lower pressure over the middle of the country, which means unsettled weather potentially over the middle of the country. We'll continue to fine-tune this, guys. Thank you all for tuning in. Appreciate any uh, new viewers that chose to subscribe. Thank you all. Um, if you're not familiar with what I do, I, I talk weather every single day, uh, make a video every single day and uh, all those cool things. So God bless all y'all. Y'all have a great and wonderful night and tune in here in the next couple of days and we'll try to continue to fine tune this. Good night.